Hey guys, it's Mike Drudge from the VRV family of companies coming to you today from Vaught RV here in Fort Worth, Texas. This is a 2023 Jayco Whitehawk 27RB. This is a true couples camper in every sense of the word. Big king bed in front with a dedicated closet for the bedroom, nice size galley with a pantry and a huge bathroom in the back. Before we get started, let me show you my personal three favorite things about this model. Come on. Number one, a 10 cubic foot 12 volt refrigerator is standard on the White Hawk. Number two, Climate Shield comes standard on all White Hawk models. It's a heated, insulated underbelly tested from zero to 100 degrees. And number three, a tankless 60,000 BTU water heater on all White Hawks. Okay, now on this 27 RB unit, it's longer than 27 feet, so don't make that mistake. It's actually 32 feet, nine inches long, about 7,100 pounds dry weight. So you need a decent sized truck on this. If you're not sure about your truck size relative to the trailer, give us a call, send us an email. We'll look up your specific truck to make sure you can safely tow the unit. Now, one thing I love that Jayco started doing a couple years ago is putting magnetic catches on all the baggage doors. Also on the White Hawk, look how thick this door is. It's really stout. This magnet catch holds it up like that. You'd have to have a pretty strong gust of wind to pull this off of here. It's a lot better than those plastic things that used to break all the time. So we have pass-through storage here. Nice, clean pass-through storage. It's lighted, you've got power in here, and you also have the little platform for your J-port for cooking outside here uh, that stows up here in the front of the coach. Now again, this unit is climate tested from zero to 100 degrees. So yeah, can you call it a four season camper? Pretty much, because it's receiving heat down in the basement when your furnace cycles on. So it really extends your camping season. I'd be fine staying in this any month of the year, especially in the Southern tier states. 30 pound propane bottles are standard on the White Hawk as compared to 20s on your Feather. Electric tongue jack that is lighted and power. So this makes hooking and unhooking a breeze, leveling front to back, super easy. As with all White Hawks, you have this signature automotive glass window up front, which is almost always your bedroom area. There is a model where the kitchen is up front. It's really nice because you have this big window, but in most cases, this is gonna be your bedroom. So this is a signature of the White Hawk model. Of course, you have your diamond plating up here to protect the front of the coach for rocks and stuff that get kicked up in transit. Your battery tray right behind here, we'll put fresh batteries in here and fully prep it right before you take delivery. A quick word about the way we do prep. So all of our pricing at Vaught RV includes full prep. That includes battery or batteries. The propane bottles are filled. It's fully inspected front to back, top to bottom. It's plumbed, everything ready for you to drive off and enjoy it that same day. And you get a two hour or more walkthrough orientation with a trained technician. So we wanna make sure you know how to enjoy your unit safely. We don't expect you to just take it off and good luck to you figuring it all out. So I appreciated that as a customer here myself. This is the opposite side of our pass-through storage again. It's lighted. You have your griddle, single burner griddle, still in the box inside here. You have your battery disconnect switch here as well. And then right here we have an inverter. So you have inverted power at locations inside the coach too. Another nice upgrade with the White Hawk. Now with all of the feathers in White Hawks, you're gonna have vacuum bonded walls. So that virtually eliminates the possibility of delamination over the course of ownership. There's nothing that's gonna tank your value quicker than a wall delaminating. This is Asdell inside and out vacuum bonded. So it's a slow, tedious and expensive process, but you're, you're the beneficiary with that. All the White Hawks will have frameless windows. As you can see here, you don't see that gasket around anywhere. It's kind of nice because this does offer some protection of that gasket. These tend to streak a little bit less than standard clamp style windows, and they look nice, nice sleek look. These all 
tilt out. So you can leave them open if you do get a rain shower on a day. It's not going to rain in there and you can still get some ventilation on the inside of the coach. One thing I like about this floor plan is that there's a bonus storage area in the back. Anytime I get more storage than just the one pass-through uh, location up front, I love it. In this case, we do have all this space under here to put uh, probably sewer hoses, gloves for outside, and that kind of thing right in here on the utility side of the coach. I appreciate that. Have our black tank and gray tank valves back here. Uh, appropriately labeled. On the White Hawk, you have an option for power stabilizers, which this has. You can get manual or power. You have the option to have power stabilizers on the White Hawk. You can tell by the size of this power cord that it's 50 amp, and, uh, and this is. So we have two AC units in this, so if you're in a warm climate like we are here in Texas, that second AC is really, really nice. Um, your main city water connection, main pressurized water connection is up here. Cable TV and satellite connection. So if you have cable at your campground, and many of them do now, hook it up here and now you'll have cable at every location inside as well as the patio. And then this is your tank flush valve. What this does is clean out the inside of your black tank best practice when you're through with a camping trip or you're about to store the unit for a while, hook up a separate hose to this. It can be a garden hose, anything. Tighten it up, turn it on, make sure your black valve is open, and just let it run. Go around, roll in your awning, fold up the lawn chairs, get your fishing pole, put the kids' toys away, all that kind of stuff, and let that run. It's gonna spray the inside of your black tank out and uh, really do a nice job of keeping it clean. Now, before you say it, I'll say it for you. Why do they put water hookups right above the power outlet? I don't know. I'll ask Jayco sometime. It seems a little counterintuitive to put water where there's electric, but I'm not an engineer. I will say this, Jayco is over the top safety conscious. So apparently they've deemed this safe but I do get a lot of people asking, is that really the best idea to have water close to the electric? I don't know, not judging, just reporting. Jayco does this on some models because of the location and uh, for electrical and plumbing and so on. Now, on the back here, outdoor shower, we have hot and cold right here in the back. This is great, so if you need to rinse off those sandy feet at the beach, or your dogs rolled in something stinky or whatever, it's a great way to rinse them off out here and not drag all that dirt inside the coach. Jayco always gives you a full-size mounted spare on all of their units, so uh, it's nice that you have that full-size mounted spare. Up on uh, top toward the roof, you can see that we're prepped for a rear camera. So if you want to add a rear camera later, it's plug and play. We can put one on for you, or you can opt for that later. On a coach like this that's 32 plus feet long, it's a good idea to have a camera up there, especially when you're backing into a site. Say this is our campsite and that camera's on, I can see just how far I am to the back of the site, or if there's a tree limb or a boulder or your spouse, you don't want to run over your spouse. It's not advisable that'll help keep you safe. Um, while I'm talking about things up there, your roofing membrane on Jayco's is gonna be warranted for at least 20 years. It may be warranted for the lifetime of the coach if it has the newer PVC uh, membrane. Most of the 2023s built in the last few months do have that PVC and they're warranted for the lifetime of the coach. Now, how many people keep their unit for even 20 years? Few, but it, it just speaks to the quality of the products that Jayco uses up there. Now, over here on what I call the fun side of the coach, save the best for last, at least outside. So this is where all the fun happens. This is where the picnic table, the fire pit, the card games and all that. There is a little outdoor kitchen assembly here. We do have lights in here. 
This is all nice enamel coated metal so that it's easy to wipe, easy to keep clean. If you spill something, there's no carpet in here, laminate or that kind of thing. It's easy to keep this clean. You have a utensil drawer here and a drink refrigerator, both USB power and household current and perhaps the most important aspect of this, a Jayco branded bottle opener, right? So, uh, yeah, we throw in the trailer for free if you buy this attached bottle opener. What a deal, right? Now, if you want to cook outside, there's a J-Port up there, which I'll point out in just a second. Jayco is uh, getting away from pulling out griddles and pulling out plumbing connections and components. Those are prone to fail when you're pulling them out, pushing them back in repeatedly. So for cooking, you get your J-Port platform and you've got, uh, you've got a spray port as well for rinsing off dishes and that kind of thing. So moving up on the fun side, of course, our tankless on-demand water heater, 60,000 BTU. When you're shopping around and you should, check and see what the BTU rating is for a tankless water heater on another unit you might be looking at. Chances are it's 40,000, maybe 43,000 BTU. Jayco's upgraded to 60,000 BTUs, which is a significant improvement. Now remember I pointed out that cable and satellite input on the other side? Here's the cable and satellite uh, connection here, which really should be output. So if you plugged in your cable over there, now I have cable here, I can mount a TV here and plug it in here. So underneath the awning, I can have my entertainment uh, set up right here, which is really, really fantastic. Back of our refrigerator, our 12 volt fridge, furnace vent right here. I would put bug screens on these locations. The last thing you want to do is have bugs get up in there in the summer when you're not using your furnace and mud daubers fill up those cavities in there which will cause you headaches in the fall when you want to crank up that furnace. This is your potable water tank. This is where you're going to fill. It's a gravity fill. So if you're out in the middle of nowhere in the boondocks, you need more fresh water, you can chug some water in there. I suggest uh, keeping only a few gallons in here if you're going to have water at the campsite where you're headed to. This way you'll have water for washing your hands and flushing the toilet and that kind of thing. No need to fill that up, otherwise you're just dragging around weight unnecessarily. Now this is that J-port, so that platform slips right in there. It looks like a hitch receiver. And then right under here is your propane quick connect. So we've got our griddle up here, propane quick connect, makes it super easy to hook that up. You can hook up a, a connection, uh, a grill of your choice if you'd like. Now, why do we have two doors, you may ask? Valid question. You'll have two doors in a couple different scenarios. One, if you have a bedroom in the front, so it will offer uh, an exit and entry point into that bedroom, particularly when the slide is closed, which will often block access to your bedroom. Now, if I need to get up in there at a truck stop, I wanna grab something out of the closet or whatever, I can do that. And uh, that makes it easy to do in the event that you need to gain access to your bedroom. The other one is sometimes if there's a second bathroom to get in and out of the bathroom from the patio side. Not the case here. I already talked about our pass-through storage, so we're good there. Um, steps here, I'll talk about these Lippert solid steps. These are standard on all these coaches. So notice it's making contact with the ground. These aren't hanging steps like those up there. These are fully adjustable, so if you're on uneven ground, you can always move these up and down and always have a firm contact point with the ground. There's a light switch right here, which you can't see because it's bright, but it casts a nice blue light under these steps, uh, entering and exiting the coach. When it's time to stow these away, simply lift up here and latch that in place, and that's the travel position close the door and we're good to go. Reverse order when you want to open it up. Pop this open and good to go. Again, Asdell inside and out on this 27RB. All right, follow me inside and let's check out the inside of this unit.
Okay, now we're on the inside of this 27 RB. This is a true couples camper in every sense of the word because we have a king bed up front, a spacious living area in the middle, huge bathroom in the back, no bunks. There's some secret sleeping areas over here that I'll get to in a minute, but you don't have to tell anybody that if you don't want to. Let's start out with this great bathroom back here. So this huge bathroom is a selling point for good reason. This feels very residential because it takes up the whole width of the coach back here. A lot of storage above the countertop, a lot of countertop uh, area, nice basin sink. Here we have a porcelain foot flush toilet, which is an upgrade from the Feather, which is an acrylic or porcelain here. And then a nice big shower with additional storage next to the shower, again, that goes all the way to the outside wall. In 2023, Jayco put doors on these cubbies instead of just having them open, which I can fully appreciate. So open up the shower door. I'm gonna step in here just to give you a spatial reference. I'm six feet tall, so I'm good here. I could be a few inches taller. Average build, plenty of room for me to maneuver in here. Glass shower enclosure here. Um, I recommend keeping a squeegee along to squeegee this off. It helps keep this clean longer. And I would include this on your little checklist before you travel. Make sure that's latched because that way this door is not slamming open and closed going down the road. Now we have pull down shades all the way around this coach. In addition to being roller shades, there's a reflective coating on the outside which helps keep the coach cool as well. That's a neat 2023 uh, upgrade. So now we're moving into the galley area, the living area of the coach. Boom! huge pantry. So this, along with the huge bathroom, are a couple things that really make this an attractive uh, couples coach. All of these shelves are removable, so if you want to just have this open and have it be a coat closet, there are hooks up here to hang your hat and your jackets and stuff like that. Maybe you have some tall items you want to put in there, golf clubs maybe would probably fit in there, or if you just want to use it as a pantry. Either way, very usable space. Um, this is a liquid chalkboard too, so you can write messages on here, shopping list, to-do list, 14 more days at Disney, whatever. It's kind of a neat feature. Um, before I go to the back of the coach, I'll just point in right inside the door here is your J command, which is standard on a White Hawk. So these, if I go to home, this is where you're gonna control your AC unit. If I go through and select, you can pair your device, check your tank levels, your water pump, your electric water heater, gas water heater, awning, stabilizing jacks, slides and everything. Here's a cool thing, put this app on your phone and you can do all these functions from your phone, which is particularly nice if you're outside watching that awning go out, watching a slide go out, watching your jo jacks drop so that you're not uh, running your slide out into a tree limb or something. Uh, I do have traditional old-fashioned toggle switches up here as well to make it super easy to turn all the lights on and off. I can do it there or on the touchpad. And then this is our Furion gas tankless water heater control here as well. There's a little storage compartment in here. Right below that is all of your fuses and your breakers. They're all labeled nicely. And then a GFI protected outlet right where it should be, right next to the counter. Speaking of power on the counter, we have our tower of power right here with USB-C and regular USB household current on top. If I drop this down in the travel position, all you have to do is lay your phone on there, if your phone is that kind of phone that'll do wireless charging, and my phone is now charging. So I love getting rid of cables any chance you get, and it's nice that uh, Jayco's providing that. You have our cutting board insert, as well as your strainer. So that reveals a nice stainless steel sink in here. These are nice, too, to put on top here to protect the top if you want to put a bowl or something on your countertop. And I like that it's an undermount sink as well. Storage here, storage compartment, 
storage underneath the sink with the cameraman's camera bag under there. Plenty of room for that. Three drawers. Now let me brag on Jayco's cabinet build. Always ball bearing drawer glides, 75 pound full extension drawer glides. One of my pet peeves is uh, lesser uh, brands will have partial clearance on their drawer glides. The drawer comes out this far and you're reaching in there to dig things out. These are full extension drawer glides. Always solid maple on the front of the drawers and solid maple on the front of the doors. In this case, of course, we have smoked glass, but it's not particle board. It's not OSB with tape over it. This is solid maple all the way around. Also, this is pocket screwed. The style is pocket screwed. It's not stapled together here. Now, are there staples in this coach? There are some staples around at different places that don't receive as much wear and tear, but important places like this, it's pocket screwed and glued together. And then this whole assembly is screwed to the framing members of the coach. So that means this whole thing will support my entire body weight. I wouldn't do that on some brands, but I'll do it on a Jayco all day long because my Jayco rep said I could. And it's true, it's really stout. Think about it, this thing's subjected to hurricane force winds, earthquake level vibrations. Every time you take it out on the road, especially I-20 east of Dallas, but that's a whole other subject. So they get beat up. You wanna make sure that these hold together as long as possible. Microwave up on top here, it's, we got a light with our range hood and it's vented. So that vents the heat and the smells outside. We have a three burner cooktop here. There's also a knife holder behind here, which is really handy. Pop those knives back there, as well as scissors out of the way. This removes for easy cleaning. It's backlit controls, decent size, a little oven more storage below and another camera case that's perfect it's like it was made for a camera case now love this 10 cubic foot 12 volt refrigerator and freezer so what's so good about these the whole industry is gravitating toward 12 volt refrigerators the biggest plus is it's bigger 10 cubic feet this same size cavity with a gas absorption traditional RV refrigerator, at best you would get eight cubic feet, perhaps less, because there's no fins in there. It's much deeper. It also behaves like a residential fridge. Turn this on, it's cold, making ice cubes in a couple hours. So I really love uh, the 12 volt refrigerators. Now that we're on the White Hawk, you can see that there's ornamental panels in here. It gives it more of a residential feel. So before I leave the living galley area, I'll point out this huge dinette. So this has a freestanding table. So this can be removed entirely. You can take it out on the porch patio if you want to. You can see there's nice lighting along the bottom. That makes a fantastic night light. And then there's storage under here too. My suggestion is to put those clear plastic tubs, go to a big box store, get a clear plastic tub that fits in there. That way you can pull it out, get your extra gloves or clothing or linens or whatever, push it back under there. If it's a big item, you can remove this out of here, but that's a handy way to access that storage under there. More USB ports, more household current right there as well. Now, in the... Uh, unlikely event that your cousin comes to visit you can convert this into a bed this is also a trifold sofa behind me i often jokingly not really say it's up to you whether you tell anybody this will sleep more than two i think my messaging would be hey guys our trailer sleeps two feeds four entertains six we'll see you tomorrow but if you really like your cousin and you don't want him to sleep outside in the tent you can convert this into a bed. This tabletop drops down, rests on these cleats, you spread these cushions out, and bingo, you have, a, have another bed. Speaking of, this is a trifold sofa. These cushions remove, bing, bang, boom, you have another sleeping surface here as well. So handy to have that if you want it. Now, right across from this 
is our fireplace and our entertainment setup. We have an Insignia brand smart television. We have our Bluetooth stereo here. So BT is Bluetooth. Pair your phone to this and now I can push music from my phone through the speakers in the ceiling or out on the patio. Really nice and handy to be able to do that. Love the fireplace. I still get the occasional eye roll. Why do you need a fireplace in an RV? Hey guys, this is a fancy space heater. So knocking the chill off your unit on a cold evening, you've already paid your 50, 60, whatever bucks a night at the campground. Why not use their electricity instead of your propane to knock the chill off this? And man, if it's only gonna be down in the 40s, this will do a very nice job of knocking the chill off of this. Now this unit, as the sign says, has 200 watts of solar already. So you have one 200 watt solar panel up on the roof. Think of this as a trickle charger for your batteries. So a lot of people see solar and think that it's gonna run everything. It's not, but it will extend the amount of time you can camp without another source of power. So that's gonna trickle charge those batteries, which are in turn gonna run that they're gonna run your lights, they're gonna run your furnace fan blower and other things. So it's nice to have that as a supplemental power source. Again, this is a smart TV. Have more storage up above and little storage on either side of the radio. I sometimes forget to brag about the two plus three warranty that Jayco has right here. Two plus three, you'll see the three a lot with other manufacturers, three years structural. You know, that just means the frame's not gonna fall apart, major things like that, but the two, you really don't see. Um, so this is Jayco saying, look, we're gonna warrant our build quality for two years. Now, you'll have separate warranties on your appliances, which will take precedent, but for the build quality, Jayco's gonna stand behind it for two years. It's certainly unusual, if not unheard of, in the RV industry to have a two plus three warranty. Now, this door has little elastic catches right here to open this up, close this off entirely. For privacy, again, I'm a firm believer in checklists. This should be on it before you travel. Make sure you latch this like so. If you don't, this door is gonna be doing this, going down the road, it's gonna break, fall off the tracks, damage the tracks, whatever. Um, I've been RVing for nearly 30 years and um, I forget stuff all the time. Maybe it's because I'm getting aged and can't remember things anymore. Seriously though, I've taken off from campsites with my awning out, done it. I have put a motorhome in gear with the jacks down back when you could still do that. So do that checklist, that pre-flight checklist, and you'll be glad you did. It only takes a few minutes so you don't pay stupid tax. All right, I'm going to go around here so Zach the cameraman can get in here with me. So this is a king bed. And I often say this, one of the great things about having a king bed in an RV is if you have a king bed at home, you get a king bed in the RV. One of the bad things about a king bed in an RV is it's a king bed. It takes up this entire room. Fortunately, I can fit in here just to make the bed and access this uh, side of the bed. Same way over there, you can see it's fairly narrow. But again, if you're, if you're used to a king bed, it's kind of nice to have a king bed. Now, as RV mattresses go, Jayco gives you a pretty decent mattress. Used to be these all RV mattresses were just terrible. This is a foam Serta brand mattress. It's actually quite comfortable. I watched a review the other day from uh, someone else who was doing a review. He said, all RV mattresses are terrible. And most of them are, but I give uh, Jayco props for giving you a decent mattress right out, right from the start. Now, can you put a mattress of your own choosing in an RV? You can put anything in here if it fits. So get your tape measure out and make sure it can. We have touch lights on either side of the bed. Just give this a touch to turn it off. Touch it again to do this blue sort of night light. And again for another blue night light. And once, once again for reading, it's real nice. This is a blackout shade for the window. So if you got the lake out there or a stream or the mountains, 
how great is that? You can lay there and watch the stars. But it also does a nice job of blacking out the light, like so. There is a little narrow closet space on either side of the bed here, closet rod on top uh, for mainly shirts and so on. You have USB ports on either side of the bed as well as household current on either side of the bed. And then up behind here is actually a blue light. There's a switch right here. It's a perfect night light. So middle of the night, you need to make that bathroom run. You don't want to stub your toe. You can pop that on. There's just enough light in here to find your way around. Now this is special. There's actually a closet dedicated to this bedroom space. So I've got a chest of drawers or drawers, I should say, built in closet rod on top. Um, clothes uh, for your hat and your bathrobe or whatever in there and there's also power in there uh, and a mirror so if you want to dry your hair <laughs> or whatever in there you can do that charge your phone your iPad or whatever kind of a nice little uh, sort of makeup room extra closet space however you want to use it but it's unusual to have something like that in a 32 ish foot trailer now if you want to add a television in here of your choosing you can do it. This area is reinforced. Here's your cable and your power connection to hook up a TV in here. Um, again, there's precious little room here, so you don't want it extending too much. I've seen some folks put an articulating TV mount so they can tilt it around. Actually, this would be a pretty good viewing area for the TV if you just mounted it flat right there. Light switch right here. And of course, our door to the outside right behind me. Now, as I mentioned, we have a, a second Furion AC unit here as well. So if you're in those super hot climates, you can, as long as you have 50 amp service, turn on your second AC. If you don't have 50 amp service, you're at a campground, say an older state park, and it's 30 amp service only, uh, it's very possible you can only run one AC. And I'm saying this generally for, for RVs in general. It depends on the AC size and so on and whether you have a power management system on your uh, RV. Most travel trailers don't. So you pop both ACs on, you're probably gonna throw a breaker. But if you have 50 amps, by all means, turn that bad boy on and cool it down. So um, you can control a lot of these lights in here individually as well as the switches here. So let's say I want these lights on, but I don't want that on. Each of them have switches on to whatever your situation is. Maybe it's uh, not great for watching movies or whatever. It's nice to have that. And then finally, this backsplash, when this came out a year and a half or two years ago, I actually had to touch it to conv convince myself it was not actual real tile. It looks, it's got a 3D look that looks like subway tile, which I really like that look, but it's not, it's just a flat backsplash material. All right, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, which will give you an opportunity to point it out to me and ask me uh, questions in the comments below. I always like hearing from you and I do my best to revisit these videos, answer questions and provide additional information. My contact info is in these videos. Again, if you want to check truck weight ratings, other features, or you've got a request for uh, other videos you'd like to see us do, by all means, give me a shout. What do you think? Do you like this unit? And what do you like most about it? I'd love to hear from you. I always appreciate you joining me. My name is Mike Drudge here at Vaud RV, one of the VRV family of companies. Click like and subscribe while you're down there. That way you'll be the first to know when I post more videos a lot like this. I'll see you next time.